Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15 and 16. I welcome everyone here to this preservation service of the month of April, May. You will not live here the same in Jesus' name. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hands from the holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on her. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Dwell on her. Bread shall be given him. And his waters shall be sure. He shall dwell on her. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, and his waters shall be sure. The subject tonight is lifted and shielded by God. Lifted, I am lifted. I am lifted by the blood out of sin and sorrow into the presence of the Lord. Lifted, I am lifted, I am lifted by the Lord of sin and sorrow. Into the presence. We shall be understanding the lifting power as well as the shielding power of God. The lifting power as well as the shielding power of God. Please, I want you to pay very serious attention to the things you hear generally in church, especially the things you hear in preservation services in the world we live in. The young man testified yesterday how his own former staff or employee tried to organize a kidnap for him. What caused him to survive were things he heard in church. You cannot die like chicken. He said he began to remind God Lord, your servants say I cannot die like chicken. What does that mean? And God said to him, if a man dies like chicken, his wife can't see him, his children can't see him. And they may not have his body to bury. What do you want? And he said, I can't die like chicken. His intestines were out. I'm sure many of you saw it yesterday. It was the most terrible sight some people have seen. But for a medical practitioner, it's normal. It's testifying there yesterday. How many of you were not here yesterday? All right, show them the, what, what happened. Those who were not here yesterday, wave your hand, let me see you. All right, where were you? Where could you be in the whole world? 
Wave your hand. Let me see you again. You were not here yesterday. Show them what happened to the man. Dick. It's okay now. You see, intestines were out. And they were out for eight hours. Number one, he did not bleed to death. The protruded intestine did not die. And the one doctor was analyzing with me yesterday. He said the bullet did not shatter the major organs. The kidneys are there in the abdomen. The liver is up there. The spleen is right there. It didn't destroy the mesenteric vessels, the ones that supply the intestinal, well, I mean, the, the, the intestines. And that is bleeding to death. The biggest vein in the body passes through there, abdominal aorta. If it shatters that one, that is death within minutes. The bullet didn't locate it. The bullet shattered the testicle without passing through the pelvic structure. The pelvic bones are here. If it passed through here to go in that direction, it's crippled for life. That is if he's still alive. But the things he had in church sustained him in the time of disaster. You shall be sustained. You shall be sustained. So as we take the journey listing carefully, please take your seat. I want to say by introduction that God is the lifter of men. The lifter. He is the lifter of his people. And God is committed to the lifting of his people and committed to the shielding of his people. When God lifts you up, he keeps you up. His authority comes with his security. When God gives you authority, he gives you security. As children of God, our destiny is up. And it is important to know that danger is very, very minimal up. Give you three illustrations. First, no bird is trappable in the sky. Birds, you set, you set traps and set snares for beds on the ground, not in the air. Second, no aircraft is afraid of arm robbers roadblock in the air. No matter how desperate the arm robber is, he cannot mount the roadblock 35,000 feet above sea level. On the last floor of a skyscraper, the roaring of a roaring lion on the ground is inconsequential. You are on 110 floors or 60 floors of a story building. The roaring of a lion on the ground 
the reefing of a snake on the ground is inconsequential. Anybody afraid on a 10 story building that a dog is barking on the ground on the ground floor need a mental state assessment. God is taking you somewhere and already took you somewhere and no devil can access where you are. If you are a believer, your amen will be louder than that. Your amen will be louder than that. Shout the loudest amen. I want to show you four pictures of our destiny of divine lifting in scripture you have a destiny of divine lifting i have a destiny of divine lifting picture the picture so you can feature in the reality number one we are a city set on a hill Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. He said ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be healed. You are not a bachelor positioned in the valley. You are not a heart planted in a hole. A city set on a hill. What is the meaning of that? First, we are not victims of ground level events. At level events. We are, you, you, are, you cannot be a victim of valley level events or earth level, ground level events. Two, we can see and deal with danger before they arrive. A city set on a hill is like a watchtower, it's like the military watch posts. You are standing up there and you, are see, you have a view of what the enemy is trying to access to do around your life and your family and destiny. We can see and we can deal with danger before it arrives. It's a watchtower operation. From this moment forward, I announce to someone here, as a city set on a hill, you will no longer be a victim of ground level operations. As a city set on a hill, before the enemy plan the next attack on your life, on your family, on your destiny, on your career, the Lord will reveal it to you and give you the grace to reverse it. You believe that, shout the loudest, amen. We are a city set on the hill. Number two, we are spiritual eagles, 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 eagles. Where you see yourself determines where you find yourself. We are spiritual or covenant eagles. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, he said, But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Hmm. Eagles. What does that mean? First, it means we have the capacity to see very far. The eagles can see at some levels up to a hundred miles ahead. 
Number two, we have the capacity to fly very high. Or B, as an eagle. Our terrain is not the ground, it's not the earth. Fly very high. 10,000 feet above sea level. At times more in the realm where the aircrafts fly. Thirdly, as eagles, we possess unbeatable strength. They shall renew their strength as the eagle. That is, you are not, you are not permitted to be defeated in a fight with the forces of hell. The eagles we hear can carry weights that are three times its size. Fourth, we dwell in the realm that is far beyond the reach of harm. We dwell in the realm that is far beyond the reach of harm. When God was dealing with the children of Israel in Obadiah chapter 1, verse 4, he gives us, gives us a parable. Though thou exalt thyself as the ego, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, that is what concerns us now. But for the other people who are offended, God say, I'll bring you down from there. But the eagle sets his, his, his nest on high, above the stars in the realm. That is, we dwell that in a realm that is far beyond the reach of harm. Mm. Number five. We rule both in the air and on the land. That is the ego. Ruling both in the air and on the land. In Job chapter 39 verse 27 to 30. Job 39, 27 to 30. Does the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock. What a strong place, the strong place. A place that is far beyond the reach of harm. Keep going, all the way to verse 30. From thence she seeketh the prey. And I'll come to that later. And her eyes behold afar off. Her young ones also suck up blood. Where the slain are, there you find the eagle. We dwell, we rule both in the air and on the land. And finally, we pursue and cannot be pursued. Tell me the last time you saw an eagle being pursued by anything. The eagle can never be the prey. It is the predator. The eagle is more dangerous than the lion. I'm sure you know that. Actually, eagles hunt baby lions and lions themselves. It will just move from the sky. I, I, I wish I told the ICT about this. And then you can give us some pictures. All the way from the sky. It will use his two, his two claws and use it and pick up the lion and lock the claw. Just lock it in the middle and then take off from the ground. All the way to the rock top where he will lay it down and pieces it. Very dangerous. Eagles, where eagles operate, even human beings are told to be careful. Yes. One of the worst enemies of the eagle is the snake. 
he uses his claw to, to crush his head. He will pick snake from inside water. Yes. Did you have some pictures to show? And then everything that is dangerous can be humbled by the ego. He starts picking the, he, he eats the snake from his head. You need to see the eye of the eagle when he's handling a snake. I personally searched it. And you are an eagle and the devil is serpent. Kill it. You saw, saw it. And this is not a very big one. But that is a, a, is a dead... The poison of serpent is immaterial in his body. It's inconsequential. Eats it effortlessly. Eats it with his poison. I hope you have permission to pick this so that I don't give you a copyright uh, strike. Thank you. From this day, I prophesy to you as an eagle, every serpent around your life is a dead serpent. Every witch around your life is a dead witch. Every wizard around your life is a dead wizard. I prophesy to you from today, the capacity to see far is imparted. The capacity to fly high is imparted. Unusual, unbeatable strength is released into your body. You shall dwell henceforth in a realm that is far above the reach of harm. In the name of Jesus, commence your rule, your rule, your dominion, your domination, both in the air and on the land. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. And from today, you are the pursuer. The last time you saw yourself running and somebody was pursuing you in the dream is the last time forever. The last time you saw yourself running and anything was pursuing you in the dream shall be the last forever. From today, you shall pursue and they shall be on the road. Somebody shout power. That's right. See, he swallows it raw from the head. Just until the tail, everything enters inside the stomach. Just deal with it. You see the eyes. Show that eye again. What other people are afraid of is what it is swallowing. I told you from the head. I'm sure you have seen that now. From the head. He consumed it from the head. The head of the snake is deadly. Even after you have cut the head off. If the head of it, the one that is down there is still deadly. That is what the eagle is feasting on. And here you are afraid of a witch, a tiny witch. And God say you are an eagle. Somebody shout no more. Shout no more! That was why when that man testified on Sunday that the wicked uncle that was killing everybody in their family said he encountered his pastor that is more wicked than his own wickedness and gave him paralysis and stroke. And he had the audacity to say that he will see who will die before who. If the pastor is strong. So I roared on the spot. You know when you are drunk, you don't rehearse drunkenness. I said, under three days is dead. I thought it was a recent thing. Not knowing that within exactly three days from his statement, he went to the shrine to make invocation. 
to call the name of fire and lion on top of shrine. He was roasted beyond recognition. Not everybody can be pursued. Not everybody is charmable. Not everybody is enchantable. The next time they call your name anywhere, the fire shall appear to roast them. I speak to everyone here. The next time they call your name in the camps of wickedness, in the camps of the occult, in the camps of witchcraft, anywhere, ritual killers camp, anywhere they invoke you or your loved ones, they shall be roasted by fire. Say, I am a city that is set on a hill, and I am an eagle. I pursue. I can't be pursued. Take your seat. Maybe that is another sticker. I pursue. I can't be pursued. Look at three people around you say, I pursue. I can't be pursued. One day I dreamed that some people came to attack me. The way I finished them in the dream, when I woke up, I was feeling it. I hope I didn't finish this too much. I finished them so day I... Only in heaven will we know the number of those who dared us. And didn't leave to tell the story. And from today, all the demons that will dare you, they won't leave to tell their stories. All the witches and the wizards and the forces of hell that are daring you, they will not leave to tell the story. You believe that shall the loudest. Amen. In our Portacos crusade this year, young lady and her husband serving us, remember them, and, and told me about the revelation she saw. And she, in, the, in that revelation, she went somewhere in that revelation and saw some demonic agents, occultic people, all manner of people making invocation on a particular picture. And she went closer. What picture is this that they are making invocation? And he saw group of them, tough ones. And he saw, he said, it was not my picture, but the devil's picture. That they are making invocation, enchantment, and placed my picture in their midst. And she said, oh, Lord. Different, oh God. He said, Lord, what is about to happen? What is going to happen? Then an angel stood by her and said, watch. All of a sudden, fire from the sky, bram, then the earth opened, wah, and they went straight to hell by direct entry. <laughs> it's a shame for a child of God to be afraid of a witch. They took your name to a herbalist and you are shaking. Tell them you want to meet the herbalist. <laughs> hey! Hey! Somebody shout power! Somebody shout power! Say, I am a spiritual eagle. I pursue. I cannot be pursued. Take your seat. We are a city set on a hill, number one. Number two, we are spiritual ego. Number three, we are spiritual stars. Stars. In Genesis chapter 15 and in verse 5, 
Genesis 15 and in verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Abraham, your seed are stars. Genesis chapter 22, verse 16 and 17. He said, And he said, By myself have I sworn, say the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in, in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the stand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, the stars of heaven. We are stars. Daniel chapter 12 and in verse 2 and 3, it says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake and some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. We are stars by our assignment in God. We are stars because we are Abraham's seed. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. We are Abraham's seed, so we are stars. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And heirs, according to his promise. What is the implication of stars? <laughs> How many of you, if you go outside tonight, you will be able to see a star in the sky? I'm sure you can. You lift up your eyes now, you can see the stars. How many of you know how far the star you are looking at is? The closest star to the earth, the Proxima Centauri, is 4.24 light years. Light years. Is 4.24 light years away from the earth you don't understand what is a light year one light year is the distance that light rays will travel in one year that is traveling at the speed of three times ten to power six meters per second in one year and one light year is equal to 9.44 trillion kilometers <laughs> 9.44 trillion kilometers. That is the distance that light will travel in a year. And then multiply that distance by 4.24. That is the distance when you look at the star. That is how far. Not 1 million, not 100 kilometers, not 1,000 from here to my degree or Lagos or something. 9.44 trillion kilometers. That is where the nearest star is located. If you want to reach it, it will take you over 250 million miles. To reach there. Trillion kilometers, trillion kilometers. You are not understanding, right? <laughs> you have to wrap it around your head. Uh, that is from here. Which one is where, where is one thousand kilometers from here? Maybe my dog or something. Multiply that by 100 million times, 100 billion times. That is where you are located. The meaning of it is you can see me, but you can't reach me. Are you 
just sitting and looking like that. Stand on your feet with the shout of praise. Hey, 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 hey. Shadaga ya da ga la ya da ya 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 ba ya da 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 ya. Liberate the city la ya da da da. I I just remember what I was I was just about to say now, say now that if it is 949.44 trillion kilometers, it will take you 215 million years to come close to where I am. <laughs> it will take you 215 minimum million years to reach where I am. If you have any means of coming close. <laughs> have you, they say they go to the moon. They go to, have you ever heard anybody say I went to the star? Look at your neighbor, say, I am a star of the spiritual type. You can be seeing me around, but you can't near me. Tell every wish and every wizard, every ancestral curse, every generational curse, every occultic curse, every power from hell. The fact that you, I am around does not mean you can near me, you can reach me. It is like being tantalized by a food you cannot eat. That is the meaning they can hate you, but they can't harm you. Because they need to be able to reach you to harm you. I've not heard this kind of word before. Listen to me. I prophesy to say, they can carry your picture, but they can't reach you. They may carry the piece of your hair, but they can't near you. They can carry a piece of your cloth, but they cannot near you. Is there somebody God is speaking to here? Give him a clap. Give him a shout of victory. Hi, 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 hi. Walk to seven people. Tell them they may be able to see you, but they won't be able to harm you. They may be able to see you, but they won't be able to reach you. 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 So don't be afraid of the native doctor another time. Don't be afraid of the witch doctor another time. Don't be afraid of the occultist another time. Don't be afraid of your witchcraft uncle another time. Don't be afraid of your witchcraft in-laws another time. Are you, is God speaking to somebody here? You are existing in the realm that is beyond the reach of harm. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What are you telling me? That it takes 4.24 light years to reach the nearest of us and 9.44 trillion kilometers is the distance a minimum of 215 million years to take for me to think of reaching. He summarized it on the screen there. Hmm. You are so close, but so far. Did it ever cross your mind that the star is that far? Something you can see with your physical eye. With, with, you, don't, you didn't need to carry a telescope. You are so near, but so far. You are so close, but so unreachable. Hey! 
You are so close but so unharmable, so untouchable, so indestructible. They, you, are, you, you are visible but not available. That's another one. I am visible but not available. I may be visible, but I am not available for your witchcraft and occultic manipulation, for your demonic agenda. I am visible. I am not available. Ay, 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 ay. I need to see how I can round up. Somebody give him another shot of victory. <laughs> What's the meaning of that? You can see me, but you can't reach me. What's the other meaning? We live in a world that is different from this one. The stars are not under the influence of this world. We live in a different world altogether. The first, pic, the f number four picture of our lifting is going to show that we live in a world that is different from this one. If we are in the same world, the, the witches would have finished many of our sins. Hallelujah. The fourth thing we are saying now, we are a city set on a hill, we are spiritual eagles, we are spiritual stars, and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That one is even further than where the stars are. I need that song very, very soon. Beyond where the stars are formed, beyond where the clouds are formed, beyond the stars of light, into the holy place. Take me higher, Lord. Take me higher, Lord. We'll sing that as soon as this word is over. We are seated in heavenly places. How do I know? Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ by grace, he has saved. And has raised us up. Jesus raised us up. And made us to sit together. In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. And where is that place? Where, where are we seated together? Now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 and in verse 22, 20 to 22. He said, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand, in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come give the lord a shout of praise why should you be afraid of a witch when his ogre is under your feet When they are master, we are seated in heavenly places. What is the meaning of that? First, we are seated above the forces of darkness and danger. Seated above the forces of darkness and danger. Above the forces of darkness and danger. The second, we have all the forces of the enemy under our feet. We are seated above the forces of darkness and danger second we have all the forces of the enemy under our feet somebody say amen somebody say amen somebody say amen somebody say amen somebody say the loudest amen Somebody say amen at the top of your voice. Amen. Hallelujah. That is where we are seated. Tonight, what will I say? Examples abound in scripture. 
of people who were lifted and shielded by God. Let me run through that and give you a counsel tonight. Number one, Abraham was lifted and shielded by God. You know the story. Abraham was lifted and shielded by God. In Genesis chapter 20 and in verse 4, when God came to Abimelech in the night and told him, you are a dead man. From verse 1 all the, all the way to verse 5. You are a dead man. Abraham was lifted and shielded by God. Number two, Jacob was lifted and shielded by God. God took him up and God shielded him. Genesis chapter 35 and in verse 5. Genesis 35 and in verse 5. And they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Something was around Jacob and his sons that made it impossible for the devil to pursue after him. Now, look at the testimony of Laban. Genesis 31, verse 22 to verse 24. Laban was going to, and it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled. And he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey. And they overtook him in the Mount Gilead and came to Laban the Syrian in the and God came to Laban the Syrian in the dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that you speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. God shall visit some people because of you this night. God shall visit your enemies, my enemies, our enemies, because of us this night. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. In Genesis, and then in verse 29, Verse 29 of the same verse, Genesis 31. Laban said, it is in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesterday, saying, be careful how you speak to Jacob. Don't tell, speak good or bad to him. Just be neutral. The God of your father came to me last night. Hear me. Under the next 24 hours, a witch shall be visited by God because of you. A wizard shall be visited by God because of you. A killer shall be visited by God because of you. A wicked, jealous, envious man or woman shall be visited because of you. Shout the loudest. Amen. Jacob was shielded, lifted, and shielded by God. Number three, Job. You know the story of Job, Job chapter 1, verse 3. The man, his substance was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, very great household. And this man was the greatest man of all the East. And then Satan testifying in verse 10, said to God, Has thou, does Job fear you for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Somebody here, the blessing of God is providing a hedge around your life. Finally, number four, Daniel was lifted and shielded. Daniel chapter 6, the whole of the chapter. Verse 1 all the way to verse 5, you can write it down. And then in verse 10, Daniel was lifted by God. And because of his lifting, they moved to conspire against him. And put him in the lion's den. But in verse 22, 21 and 22, that the king came, then said Daniel to the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel, and he has shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me, and also before the O king, I have done no hurt. Somebody say, Amen. The angel of the Lord will manifest for you shortly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your right hand and say, I am lifted. And I am shielded. I give you three counsels very quickly. And then we shall pray. Number one. Determine. To be among the stars of God. In your generation. Be among the stars of God. In your generation. Determined to be among the stars of God in your generation. What's the meaning? Do all you all that is required of you in order to be lifted by God. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 to 2. Anything required of God by you, do it. If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, he will set you on high. The meaning of it is, in your generation, determined to be an Abraham. Determined to be an Abraham, an Isaac, a Daniel. Release excellence. Do everything required. An Esther, a Queen Esther, a Deborah. A principal person, a notable person. When you have made up your mind to be like that for God, you don't need to beg him to shield you. Because kingdom assets attract kingdom security. You don't beg the government to gather so rock or the White House. You don't beg the government to guard the Central Bank of Nigeria or the U.S. Federal Reserve. You don't beg people. You, you, you don't, no begging. Just become an asset. You attract security. If you're a kingdom asset, you attract kingdom security. Secondly, exist in the consciousness of your far above status in Christ. Far above principality and power. Far above status. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 to 22. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 to 6. I am far above. I am far above. I am far above. I'm not in the same realm with the witch. I told you, eagles don't fear snakes. They hate snakes. They actually deal brutally with snakes. Far above status. Far above. Far above. Someone say aloud, loud amen. Somebody say it louder, amen. Say amen at the top of your voice. Exist in the consciousness of your far above status. And finally, put away ungodliness from your life. Ungodliness. That was our text in Isaiah 33, verse 15 and 16. He said, if you will walk righteously, if you will speak uprightly, not crookedly, if you will despise the gain of oppressions, you don't make money from oppressing people, if you will shake your hands away from fraudulent money, we live in a generation today where money has become the god of people. People will do everything to get that money sell their body, do all manner, be crooked, make deals, all manner, because of money. And, and if you will stop your ears from hearing blood, where they are destroying other people's character, you are not there. You shut your eyes from evil. He said, you shall dwell on high. Then your place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given you and your waters shall be sure. A satanic cycle has just been broken. Somebody whose name was on an enemy hit list to attack you, to hit you, to cut you off, you, your family, or loved ones, that list just caught fire. It set on fire. Stand up on your feet. And, and I just heard now, you will not die like, die young like your people died. Like family members that like your father died. Like your, your siblings died. You won't die young like that. As a matter of fact, God is going to use you to revenge against the devil. Everything the devil did wrong in your family, God will use you to make the devil to pay for it. 